Hello and welcome to another Pie and Smith production. There's been plenty of talk after last night's epic encounter between Michael Van Gerwen and Joe Cullen. And there's been plenty of talk on Twitter and from Sky themselves. Is this the best game ever? Well, firstly, we're just going to touch on how good last night's game was. It was excellent. The drama and the standard was brilliant. And then we're also going to touch on what games we really think from yesteryear were the best games ever. We've had a couple of questions about um, about that in the comments, so we'll address those. But first, one man who watched every single dart last night live and was enthralled throughout was Matt Pyman Hill. And I'll hand you straight over to the main man. I was. It was absolutely gripped last night. It was a, It was a, the best game, certainly the best game I've seen in a long time. Certainly the best game of this tournament. Let's hope they can top it, because if they top it, it'll be a serious game. Um, no, it was, it was brilliant. You know, I, don't, I always think to make something uh, really special, you need a, a culmination of several factors. And, and this game kind of had it all. You kind of had uh, Van Gerwen, the untouchable favourite, who'd looked imperious coming into the, the game. No, no one really giving uh, Cullen much of a squeak, perhaps maybe apart from one bearded man on a YouTube channel with, yeah, with very few subscribers. Yeah, but I, uh, look, all jokes aside... Um, Van Gerwen was a, a rightfully a strong favourite coming into it. He, he'd been in, imperious in his previous two performances. He uh, he definitely had the Ali Pali edge over Joe Cullen as a multiple champion. Uh, you've got Joe Cullen, someone who has, has threatened to do this for many, many years, but always had a series of bad luck or, or unfortunate events get in the way. And, and he's had his mentality questioned a number of times. A lot of people have written him off as a bottler and stuff. So, uh yeah, it, it just had all the elements of uh, of a potential classic. And then it, it all required Joe Cullen to turn up and play sensationally well. And, and that's what he did. We're looking purely at the averages. Yes, they both average over a ton, over seven sets. So it's obviously an extremely high calibre of game. Uh, people will point to the fact that the averages have been bettered in other games. But there's more than averages go, goes into a classic darts match. You need drama. You need back and forth. You need a comeback generally. Um, and and we would normally say you need an atmosphere. And for some people, that will be why um, this can't be classed as one of the great games because the, there was no atmosphere. You know, a lot of people I saw afterwards saying, imagine if the crowd had been in for this game and stuff. Um, you know, similar applied to the, the clemens Ratajski match before it with all their missed darts at double. Like, imagine if a crowd had been in for that. Um so I, I, I totally get that, but I, I'm just looking at this game purely on what on, on what it was. It was a superb contest between two players playing phenomenally well and bringing the best out of each other. I was almost more impressed with uh, with Michael Van Gerwen in this game than in his previous two games. He had to dig so deep. At 3-1 down, uh, Cullen had played to a standard where it just simply didn't look like Van Gerwen had anything left to give. And he dug deeper and deeper. Cullen did not drop off the boil. Van Gerwen raised it to an exceptional level. Cullen went with him. The key shots went with Van Gerwen. You had these two um, bull attempts for the match from Cullen in the last set, where one of where, which where John Park completely lost the plot. And that was the same as me watching it, to be honest. I was screaming at the screen. Um it's just the, the standard and the quality and the drama on show, absolutely sensational. And uh, uh, the last leg, I, I just felt so, so sorry for Joe Cullen. Um, you know, to go off with a 57, he was already hurting. But when Van Gerwen stepped in and hit that 180, it was the equivalent of shooting him right through the skull. He was dead at that point, you know. Um it, it was brutal, really. I think Joe Cullen continued doing the leg without hitting, like pretty much hitting a single treble in the entire leg. Um, and, and the sad, perhaps the only sad bit to come from that match is the clip that, that was shared on Twitter was of the last leg, naturally, where Van Gerwen wins it. And, and the last leg was a non-event, really. It was a, it was a complete anti-climax to what was a sensational 20-something legs before that. Full of drama, full of big shots, quality back and forth. Like I, I couldn't sit still in my seat watching it. I was up on my feet several times uh, in awe of, of the pair of them. Gutted for Cullen, full of admiration for Van Gerwen. And it certainly goes in as one of my five greatest games I've ever watched live. Um, Adam, I, I know that um, we've had a few questions off the viewers of uh, what our personal favourite games have been. Um, and aside from that one, I wonder if there's any that, that come to your head. 
Yeah, so it's fun, funny this question was asked actually because a few weeks ago before the World Championship started, I actually watched a game back, and I don't do I don't watch many games retrospectively um, back, and it was um, Taylor versus Lewis in um, the 2013, I think it was Grand Slam, just just absolutely ridiculous. Now mm. it didn't have the drama that other games that I know you're going to mention, and particularly the the Van Gerwen against Cullum one, it didn't have the final leg or final set drama. But the amount of 180s was just absolutely completely off the scale. Lewis, that was Lewis in his pomp. Taylor was still in his pomp. I think it went to, it was a first to 15 or 16 game. Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor, it, and it was like, you know, 9 or 9, nine 8. And it got to that kind of stage where there was just popping in 180s all over the place. It was the most 180s in a game ever by an individual until only recently when Simon Whitlock beat that in again in the Grand Slam against, against Van Gerwen. But yeah, that was absolutely awesome, that game for me. Like you say, I've all, I always say um, darts is a better place when Adrian Lewis is in form. It's not happened for a long time. Um, that was one such occasion. And, you know, there was no animosity, if you like. There was both all smiles. The crowd were going nuts. I think it was at Wolverhampton Civic Hall. It was just an absolutely fantastic game. The quality was just ridiculous. There was averaging like 110 each. And then, like I say, Taylor just towards the end of the game reeled off a few legs in succession and, and took the game and, took uh, you know, made the result look um, uh, uh, wider than than it than it tr- than it truly was, but yeah, Lewis just um, f- faded late on. But um, yeah, just on the Van Gerwen game last night, I mean, Cullen played above himself as you predicted, Pine Man. Um, yeah, we had those chances. It was, a, and as you say, the clip that's going around of the final leg. It's a real shame that Cullen kind of fell apart a little bit there. But we've got to remember that Van Gerwen um, earned the right to throw first and and, and as such threw first in in the last leg and. You know, there's been talk about the last leg um, or the deciding set format for the for the World Championships this year, whereby previous years you had to win by two clear legs. One example we're going to talk about shortly. Um, and this year it's just straight into the, the, the like any other set, um, the fifth leg only, nothing further than that. And it adds absolutely massive drama, as we saw in the Clemens and Matajski match as well last night. And then, and then again in the Cullen and Van Gerwen match, um, but yeah, Cullen um, to have two set two set darts, uh, two match darts on the ball in two different legs. I think consecutive legs, mm. a one, two, four, and a, and a something else. Um, one, six, four, yeah. Very, very close on both occasions. Um, mm. Out of ball on both occasions. Um, yeah, the, the one and the, the one in the in the final leg was even closer. So yeah, just fair play to Cullen and Jamie couldn't get over the line. I mean, we've described him as an unlucky player um, previously, but. I don't think there was any hint of being unlucky here. He just come up against obviously the world's best player, and he and he pushed him right to the wire. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, moving on to a couple of other examples you might have of your favourite games, Pyman. I know you've got a couple lined up. Yeah, well, uh, like just to touch on that Lewis Taylor game that you mentioned. I think, as you say, both averaging around the hundred and ten mark over such an extended uh, format. Certainly, in terms of raw quality, probably the best game uh, we've seen. Uh, obviously, Michael Van Gerwen probably put in better individual performances, but it's very rare that two individuals can go with each other to that standard. And that's what made that game uh, so great. I think Adrian Lewis said after that game, I walked off the stage at one point, averaging 115 and I was losing. And I just thought I might as well pack up. Um, Like that is just, that is for someone who just wants to see darts players performing at their highest level, you know, that was the game to watch. Uh, For me, uh, probably as you can tell by the uh, reaction to the Cullen Van Gogh game, it's all about the drama for me. Uh, I just, I just love any kind of, um, you know, occasion and storyline and and a back and forth and a a climax um, to a thrilling game. So I, I personally would put Rob Cross versus Michael Van Gogh in that semi-final from a couple of years ago, right in the mix for me. Uh, you just had the perfect storyline of the, you know, the up and comer, unfancied cross. Uh, he'd come out of nowhere, quit his job just a few months earlier or whatever uh, against Van Gerwen. It had been build up, build it up as, um, you know, a potential classic, and then it delivers. Van Gerwen missing all those games in uh, all those uh, darts. Uh, to win it and Cross stepping in. Uh, some wonderful finishing. Uh, Seems to remember Rob Cross absolutely destroying the treble 18s um, throughout the contest. It was just fantastic. And to be honest, it was such a good semi-final that the final of Cross-Taylor ended up being a bit of a, a damp squib. Not because it wasn't high on quality, but just because that Cross-Van Gogh game, it, it deserved to be the final. It, it was fantastic. Um, 
Other ones that spring to mind for me are, are normally uh, from the Phil Taylor era and normally involve him getting beat because what you had in the Phil Taylor era was uh, this untouchable player way more than Michael Van Gerwen. You know, Phil Taylor getting beat was like a, a, a once in a blue moon event, really. Uh, he dominated the circuit for years. And, and when he did get beat, it was normally a very special performance that beat him. Raymond van Barneveld winning in that world final when Barney had come over across from the BDO. That was an absolute classic. That went all the way to a sudden death leg and, and Barney held it together there. Uh, but, you know, I had a, a really great immersive crowd in there in the Circus Tavern. It was a, a cracking atmosphere, um, really respectful atmosphere, as well as like, the, you know, like there would be a, a hush would descend upon the crowd just before they go to throw these darts um, because they had a, a respect for the players as well as a, an admiration. Um, but yeah, oh, it's just a, that's a sensational game. And I'll chuck in one from a personal perspective, not one that will get mentioned many times, but I was re-watching it the other day and I told you yourself that I was watching it. Uh, Steve Beaton, the bronze Adonis, knocking Phil Taylor out of the uh, the uh, Grand Slam. Uh, w- go watch it on YouTube. This is the performance of Steve Beaton's career. He, he, he just played. He went toe-to-toe with absolute pomp Taylor. And... Uh, yeah, it, it went right all the way through to the end. Uh, I think it was like 16-14 or 16-15, but just classic beaten. And he, he got through to the semi-final. And uh, I really thought he was finally going to get that TV win, but it uh, ended up eluding him. Um, as we saw a lot through Phil Taylor's career, to be honest, um, normally when a player did summon the performance to knock him out, they would often go out the next round just from being utterly yeah. worn out. Um so, yeah, I mean, uh, oh, I could go on all day. I mean, I remember James Wade having a, a, an absolute classic with A.D. Lewis in the semi-final um, J- and John Park having a classic with James Wade as well. Uh, uh, Wayne Mardle beating Phil Taylor. Yeah, I, I really could go on all day and I won't bore people. But, um, yeah, I, I thought that Cullen uh, Van Gerwen game, getting the uh, talk of, of one of the greatest games was, was thoroughly merited. Um and we're going to continue to see Van Gerwen in these kind of contests because he, he like Taylor does, he asks people to produce um, their best ever performances to try and beat him. And, and it's just great to watch. And, and, and let's finish by saying fair play to Van Gerwen. What a performance. Um, any other player would have rolled over in that situation. Not Van Gerwen. Testament to his, his will to win. And it's going to take a hell of a performance to knock him out in it. Yeah, well, hopefully that comes from Dimitri Vandenberg in the quarterfinals, but he's got to beat Dave Chisnell first. But yeah, I'd just say, Pye Man, on that um, Taylor versus Barney, I think that is widely regarded as the best game ever. It went to a sudden death leg. And t- it, that was at the time when Taylor was utterly, utterly dominant. I think he, he'd won like nine of the last 10 world championships mm-hmm. or something outrageous. Um, and and the game needed Barney at that stage. I think Barney came over having already won four BDOs. Um, it was a proper, proper rivalry between the, between the two guys. Plenty of respect that sometimes boiled over. Uh, we, saw, we saw that on stage a couple of times between them. And yeah, proper rivalry that the fans bought into and Sky bought into. And it was built up to be a massive game. And it truly delivered. And that's where we was in the format where you had to go to clear. But um, I think when you get to five all, which they did, it then becomes sudden death. Taylor threw for the ball first. Barney put one in the ball. I mean, it was, I think Taylor hit a 180 in the last leg and didn't win. Um, yeah. It's it brilliant. had everything. Brilliant. It yeah. really um, did. And it's, yeah. still rem- it's still remembered. I mean, I couldn't even remember what year that was, to be honest. Was it 2003, mm. possibly? Yeah. I wouldn't want to guess it on but the spot, to yeah, be honest. Just, it was, uh, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, you're right. It stood the test of time. That's yeah, you know absolutely. well over well over a decade ago, and people still refer it as the best game. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Let us know in the comments what your favourite games are. Definitely. Or of the, there's been plenty of talk about MVG Cullen, so that that's our reaction to it, and adding a bit more a bit more to the conversation as well. So we'll we'll speak to you soon. There's plenty still to come in the PDC World Darts Championships 2021. Thank you. Cheers, guys.